Okay, uh, I'm Dave Welch with Automation Devices, and we're going to be talking about how to tune inline feeders today. Uh, many of you may have uh, bought them from us, either pre-tuned for a specific track that you sent in to us, or one that we built for you. But many times you may get them, you put them on a different table, you try them on some other stand, and they don't run the way you like, or maybe you've even changed a track. Or let's say you were building a track, and you changed the track as you kept adding maybe say covers and then hold downs to that track and adding weight to it and anytime you do that you're going to change how the inline runs and sometimes you need to make that adjustment on how to make it run better for you now this being an adjustable inline the nice thing is it can always be retuned and it's just a single screw retuning and what we're talking about is the screw right here in the middle of this spring bank this is the one that we're going to adjust to do all the tuning for whether we've changed the track or changed the weight or changed its length. Okay, um, This type of an inline, this is a T18, this is our largest one, it can accommodate a track, and when I'm saying the track I'm talking about just the part that your, your parts might run along, you know, the thing that you've created to bolt onto the top of this. This can accommodate up to about six pounds. There are ways to make exceptions, but generally speaking, if you're building a track, you don't really want to build anything that's going to be greater than six pounds. Uh, if, if it's within the six pound range, the adjuster here will allow you to compensate for that. Um, this can either be purchased in a 120 volt or a 240 volt system, but they're all going to run on full wave 120 pulse cycles. Um, and basically what you're doing, just to really simply put, and then we'll turn it on and show you, if the track that you're going to starts off lighter, the adjuster screw is going to be down at the bottom. As you continue to add more weight to this track and, and add hold downs or covers to it and the weight increases, in order to compensate for that, we're going to move this screw up, and we'll show you that right now. But one of the first things you want to check before you turn anything on is because I said this is 120 pulse, the controller that you're going to use, and if you're going to use one of our controllers, there's a switch inside here, and inside that switch, there's a little switch in here that would say either 60 or 120. You want to make sure it's switched over to the 120 side. Okay, and then close it back up, and once that's all set, uh, at this point, what we can do is we can turn it on, and this is already now set for the lightest weight track possible, but we'll show you how it runs. We've got the controller set relatively low, and as we put parts on here, as I turn the controller up, it'll go faster and faster. And we don't really need it to probably run that fast, so we'll turn it down a little bit so we get a nice smooth movement of the part. Okay, so you can see the parts going through nice and smooth. So now here's where we're going to talk about, let's say your track evolves over time and you want to add to it. So I'm going to grab one and show you what it could look like real quick. And here's what, say a heavier track. This track here weighs about two pounds. And this one's probably just a little bit over six pounds. So you can see how there's additional hold downs. There's a, a cover that goes over the top of the part. And this, this, pound, this track weighs a lot more. So what we're going to do is let's take this smaller one off and we're going to put that one on and show you how to make the adjustments so that it'll work for that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just simply going to remove the screws that hold this track down and we're going to put the next one on. Okay, now that we've got the heavier track in place, I want to show you what we need to do to make this work correctly. But the first thing we'll do is we'll turn it on, we'll put the part in here and see what it does. So I can feel it vibrating, but nowhere near what it did before. And as I put this part in here, if you can see behind that rail, as I turn this up, it's vibrating, and I'm almost at the top of the knob right now, and this is just not moving fast enough. And all that simply tells me is, I've added weight to it, and the unit's not prepared for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out what it's going to take. I'll probably set this somewhere in the middle. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this screw, and as I loosen it, I'm going to get it just to the point where it's loose enough where I can lift it up a little bit. And I'm only going to try to lift it up, say, maybe a sixteenth of an inch at a time. There, I moved it up a little bit, and as I tighten it, I'm going to see if I've made a change. And it doesn't seem to have gotten any better there. So I'm going to loosen it again. And very carefully, I'm going to try to move it up another sixteenth of an inch. And it is trial and error.
We can see it's starting to move a little bit when I went to the maximum position on the dial. You can see it's just starting to move a little bit, and it does take some patience. Now you can see it's starting to move, we're going to go a little bit further. Now you can see it's starting to move, a little bit higher yet. And all of a sudden, our part's starting to take off now. Now, I am at the maximum point on the dial, so it is possible that I can make this run even better yet. But if you're looking for something even slower than what this is doing, you might already consider yourself done. But let's just see what happens when I continue to take this up a little further yet. So naturally, when you loosen it back up, it is going to drop off. But you have to do that in order to reposition it. So let's go a little higher. And you do want the screw to be tight. So I'll tighten it up. Okay. Let's make it a little looser again. We'll go a little higher yet. And when I go even higher yet, you can see it's fallen off. So there was a point where I've actually gone too high now. So I'm going to lower it back down to where it seems to run the best. Right there, it seems to be running pretty fast. You're probably getting 30 parts a minute out of something like this rate right now. So if I were to fill this track up, you can see when I let the parts release, just how fast they're actually going. Whoop. All right, so I'll let these parts go. And you can see they're traveling pretty fast. So now if I turn it down some, just because I want it to maybe go smoother and a little quieter, you can see that's traveling pretty fast. And the good thing is, I simply made a one screw adjustment from a very lightweight track to a heavier track, because going from two pounds to seven pounds is a considerable weight change. But you can see, by just simply adding the track on here and it didn't work, it was so easy to just make that adjustment. But it just took a little patience, and because I knew the track was heavier, I knew to move the screw up. But at least knowing what to do will get you in the right direction. And certainly, if you have any questions, feel free to call into Automation Devices. We'll be happy to help you out or give you the right direction or try to tell you what to try. So thanks for checking in.